50s, but her comedy was timeless. What is a Kardashian? I mean, can you get shots for it? I don't know. <laughs> Comedian and actress Ann Mara is gone, but her real-life relationship with that man there, Jerry, her husband, made us laugh for decades. We'll look back at Mara's memorable moments coming up in about 15 minutes. Also this afternoon, street fight in Athens. This is sacred ground. We'll show you the battle to preserve history. That story's next. Some in one neighborhood in Athens, they're petitioning to have their street declared historic. They want to preserve the integrity of their neighborhood. Well, this comes after one of their homeowners asked the city for a demolition permit. CBS 46's Melinda Roeder has the story from Athens. Most of the homes on the street were built in the 1920s or 30s, and while most of the homeowners work hard to preserve their historic homes, one neighbor wants to knock hers down. It's unfortunate. You know, some people can't be satisfied. Gregory Holcomb grew up in this neighborhood. It's quiet, it's peaceful, they're good neighbors. People really enjoy each other's company. So he welcomed the opportunity to move back to West Rutherford Street less than two years ago. But maintaining his home built nearly a hundred years ago isn't easy. It is a labor of love and it's intensive. Just across the street, Tucker Blount also enjoys the quiet ambiance. This is just the most wonderful area in the world to live. But neighbors now fear their peaceful cocoon could be changing after one homeowner applied for a demolition permit. She plans to knock down her home and build a much newer, larger one in its place. In order to preserve and maintain, there has to be some control. When neighbors caught wind of her plan, they began a petition drive, lobbying city leaders to designate West Rutherford as a historic street, meaning demo permits and development would need to pass more layers of approval. This neighborhood represents <coughs> something in five points that has been infringed upon by different people in their efforts to say we're going to reconstruct five points and it needs to be, for the most part, left alone and be a part of history. Neighbors say it's not too far of a stretch. After all, their street is already bookended by two other historic districts. One street that way and one street this way. One neighbor even offered to buy the house and spare it from the bulldozers, but the homeowner won't sell and continues to push for that permit. Neighbors have now until June 15th to either sign that petition or voice their concern before the mayor and the commission gives their approval on what will happen to the future of this home. In Athens, Melinda Roeder, CBS 46 News. Now let's take a look at what's making news across America. The owner of a pressure cooker left unattended near the National Mall has been found and arrested. Video shows Capitol Police gaining access to his vehicle and then safely detonating that device. The officers patrolling the area spotted the suspect's parked car late Sunday afternoon. That area was temporarily roped off during the investigation. It has since been reopened. Well, this is just one example of the severe weather that slammed Texas over the weekend. This refrigerator mm. was once inside someone's home in Wimberley in the southern part of the state. Rain has been slamming the area and more storms continue this afternoon. At least three deaths have been blamed on the weather. A twister damaged parts of Houston over the weekend, forcing at least 2,000 people out of an apartment complex. Certified Atlanta's most accurate forecast. Now, CBS 46 Chief Meteorologist Jim Kosek. Now, we've seen additional storms already today on this Memorial Day, uh, very close to the Red River separating Oklahoma and Texas. Running out in advance of that parent storm system uh, is, is pretty much the offspring, uh, the little children, if you will, uh, for lack of better imagination right there, that spin off these clusters of small storms. Now, at least initially, there's no lightning in the state of Georgia. That's going to change, unfortunately. CBS 46 Doppler radar shows the uh, clusters of rain, parts of uh, troop, southern mare weather over to Upson County at this hour. Uh, even as we expand the picture uh, over parts of Newton, southern, south central Walton County, all this moving off to the north, northeast at about 20 miles per hour. Also in around uh, Union City, small parts of uh, Henry County, south of McDonough, uh, southern parts of uh, Clayton County, east central Fayette, uh, Carroll County. County, uh, Douglas as well. And again, the movement of uh, these storms, and you can see how the rain expands out across uh, parts of the uh, perimeter on both sides, off to the north northeast at about 20 miles per hour. So given that, it's going to, and again, this is just rain, no lightning just yet, no thunder, off to the east point at 421, west end at 436, and Atlanta 
getting into the act at about the quarter of the hour. More wet weather just off to the east of Austell. This is uh, getting away from Interstate 20 west of exit 55. But again, that's going to cross the 75 near Marietta and farther to the north. Alpharetta will be drying out momentarily, but uh, this is kind of sandwiching uh, 575. You have the heavy pockets of rain that will parallel 575 just off to the east and also off to the west. So if you're traveling 575 in the next couple of minutes, you're probably a OK. Although again, that's going to change and we do have some lightning uh, not too far to the west into Alabama. That's why all this is going to be changing. You can see the movement off to the north northeast again about 20 miles per hour, some brief hard downpours. But again, this is just one spoke of moisture that'll run through early tonight. The parent storm system with the risk of severe weather still back out over North Texas and southern portions of Oklahoma. So as we go through this evening, seven, eight, nine o'clock, that's the biggest risk for you know the big downpours. I, I, I'd say isolated severe weather. I'm not I'm not gung ho on that, but uh, you know definitely some pockets of hard downpours that we're going to have to contend with. So this will all ramp up again during the course of tomorrow and again on Wednesday. More notable during the lunch hour onward, but still some areas could get wet during the morning. So that's going to keep a lid on temperatures as we grow deeper into the work week. The risk of thunderstorms will be relegated to the afternoon and the coverage area will become less. So more miss than hit shall be the thunderstorms Friday afternoon this weekend during the afternoon before everything ramps back up with the acts of another storm system coming our way on Monday. So now that the humidity is in and we're stuck in this summer summer pattern here, Scott, thunderstorms are in the forecast each and every day. It's isolated severe weather risk if that's the silver lining. And we know you and the entire team will stay on top of all of it. Jim, thank you. School is out for most of the nation's universities, but one southern campus still buzzing because the NCAA has put it under a microscope. The allegations that could bring down one of the most celebrated athletic programs in the entire nation. Next. And remembering a legend who made us laugh for decades. We'll take a look back at the career that earned Ann Mara a spot on Hollywood's Walk of Fame. Having a happy and healthy child is what all parents hope for, but the reality is many children have illnesses and developmental disabilities. Well, today there is new information about SIDS and new data on children with dyslexia. Ebony Williams has the information in today's Top Health Stories. A new study suggests living at high altitudes may increase the risk of sudden infant death syndrome. Denver researchers say babies living at altitudes above 8,000 feet were at more than twice the risk for SIDS. Parents are reminded to put babies to sleep on their backs. The link between vision problems and dyslexia in children is in question in a new study from the UK. Doctors found more than 8 in 10 children with dyslexia had perfect scores on vision tests. And heart failure patients who are depressed are five times more likely to die. That's according to doctors in Spain who also found that heart failure patients who were not depressed had an 80% lower risk of death. Those are some of the day's top health stories. Ebony Williams, CBS News, New York. Well, many hospitals here in the U.S. have stopped spending, sending home formula freebies with new breastfeeding mothers. Government researchers found a big decline in the practice, which they say discourages nursing in new moms. In 2013, just under one-third of U.S. maternity wards offered baby formula giveaways. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends babies receive only breast milk for their first hmm. six months. It is a sad day in Hollywood. Comedy great Ann Mara died Saturday today. Her son Ben Stiller tweeted out that the family was certainly lucky to have her in all of their lives. She and her husband Jerry Stiller were married for 61 years. They had two children. They had a host of grandchildren as well. Carter Evans has more on her life and legacy. Let's remember the last moment we spent together. I was asleep. You run off with my paycheck. <laughs> Brooklyn native Ann Mira first hit the silver screen in the 1950s. She would become a household name after finding her partner in comedy, both on screen and off. Hi. How you doing? Mira married fellow comedian Jerry Stiller in 1954, and their career took off. I'm Hershey Horowitz. <laughs> I'm Mary Elizabeth Doyle. Stiller and Mira's real-life relationship was inspiration for their classic comedy bit about a short Jewish man dating a tall Irish woman. With Dempsey's on my mother's side. Dempsey. <laughs> Horrible. Schmollowitz on my mother's side. The two became regulars on The Ed Sullivan Show. I'd like every cockroach 
couch in New York to commit suicide. And Mira starred in dozens of films and TV shows over the years, earning a Golden Globe nomination and four Emmy nods. She took on several dramatic roles and appeared with son Ben Stiller well, in Night job. at the Museum. I felt a connection when I entered this office, and I don't know, I feel like you did too. I didn't feel a connection. But Mira was best known for the comedic chemistry with her husband that proved timeless. Not lost. I'm you not have been lost. lost since 1972. I was lost please. when I found you. She is survived by her children, grandchildren, and husband of 61 years. What is the one thing that made it work for you, our marriage? I had you. Ann Mira was 85. Carter Evans, Los Angeles. Yeah, they were a great couple mm -hmm. together, too. Well, take a look at this. Good thing one guy is no longer roaming in the wild. Look at the size of this gator. He is huge. Record setting. A monster lives nearby. Find out where you can see it next. And life preserver. Cops take to area lakes to keep holiday boaters safe. Will Frampton has the lesson that they want you to learn all summer long. That's next. You're watching CBS 46 News. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Now that it is the unofficial start of summer, you will be seeing a lot more of this out on Lake Lanier. Lots of boaters out there. Well, no one sees it more than sheriff's deputies who work on the lake. As CBS 46's Will Frampton shows us, they've had their hands full trying to keep those boaters safe. It is certainly one of the busiest weekends of the year here on Lake Lanier. Thousands of people went out on their boats, but we found out dozens of them did not come back before having an encounter with sheriff's deputies. Of all the weekends throughout the year, Sergeant Josh Watson knows this one is likely to go down as one of the most eventful. The weather is near perfect and the water the same. But it's also a recipe for recklessness, especially when you bring too much of this into the mix. Sometimes people throw caution to the wind out here. Um, you know, they certainly let loose and they have a little more fun than they normally would. That's a sound most of us only associate with roads and interstates. But today we heard it on the water. So you just bought this thing? This is what their weekend has looked like. One stop after another, hour after hour. Most are because people don't have life jackets on or are going too fast for conditions, but make no mistake, they are looking for people who have had too much of this and are still trying to drive a boat. Take it to Sunset Cove, you'll see plenty of it. Jim Harrington has been a Lake Lanier boater for years. He knows the drill on boating and booze, knows not to have any if he's behind the controls. Do you think most people know what the laws are? Uh, you know. uh, probably not. The answer, you can drink and drive a boat so long as your blood alcohol content stays below the legal limit. Still, Sergeant Watson says when people get on the water, they have a way of losing track of themselves. Unfortunately, you know, we do have to work some incidents. You know, the, the thing that we advocate out here is just good common sense. Of the roughly 40 boaters who were stopped by sheriff's deputies on the lake yesterday and today, Three of them were arrested. They were minors, and they were caught with alcohol. At Lake Lanier, I'm Will Frampton, CBS 46 News. Covering news across the South this afternoon, Memorial Day weekend took a deadly turn after one person drowned. This happened in Daytona Beach, Florida. Rough surf and strong riptides are to blame. Witnesses say that they saw two men in the water. Both those men were screaming for help. Officials say the men were brothers. There was also a third person trying to save them. Rescuers were able to eventually pull both men out of the water. They were then taken to the hospital, but that's where one of those brothers died. The NCAA decides to move ahead with its investigation into alleged academic fraud involving student athletes at the University of North Carolina. An independent report found that 18 for, for 18 years, thousands of students took fake paper classes that didn't require attendance. The report alleges athletes were given passing grades so they could stay eligible for sports. In a written statement, UNC's chancellor and athletic director said they take those allegations seriously. They will respond to the investigation within 90 days. The Montgomery Zoo in Alabama has a new attraction. It's this alligator. It was caught last year during Alabama's oh. annual alligator hunt. The guy's a monster. The massive gator weighed in at 1,000 pounds. Well, mm. and 11 pounds, too. It measured 15 feet 9 inches. That gator was caught in the Alabama River in Wilcox County. It is now certified by the Safari Club International as the largest gator ever caught. Well, this Memorial Day, military leaders are asking some pretty serious questions about the rise of ISIS. 
They are wondering if troops there in Iraq can actually stand on their own and whether U.S. forces will have to go back to Iraq and risk their lives again. Here's more from Kim Hutcherson. The U.S. Defense Secretary made waves this weekend when he said Iraqi troops, the force the U.S. spent billions training and equipping, weren't up to the fight against ISIS. The Iraqi forces just showed no will to fight. Uh, they were not outnumbered. Uh, in fact, they vastly outnumbered the opposing force, and yet they failed to fight. After the Iraqi city of Ramadi fell to Islamic State militants last week, the U.S. sped up arms shipments to Iraqi forces. But some say more U.S. troops may have to go back to Iraq to fight a renewed Islamic insurgency. Senator John McCain said Sunday, quote, we need more troops on the ground in Iraq, and he's not the only one who thinks so. You're not losing and you're not winning because we're not really engaged in this fight. I mean, at some point, uh, we're going to have to understand that the goal is the destruction of ISIS. The, I think we have to do the force that's proportionate and, frankly, the violence proportionate necessary to push back ISIS. Currently, there are about 3,000 U.S. military personnel in the country training Iraqi forces, but they're not in combat areas. Nearly 4,500 U.S. soldiers died in Iraq before combat troops were withdrawn in December 2011, and the American public is wary about taking on new fights. A CNN ORC poll conducted last September showed Americans were against sending ground troops to fight ISIS, whether in Syria or in Iraq. I'm Kim Hutcherson reporting. Now to the big stories making news around the world today. Irish voters and gay rights activists, they're celebrating a landslide win in the country's referendum on same-sex marriage. The mainly Catholic country is the first in the world to approve gay marriage by popular vote. 62% of people voted in favor of changing the Irish Constitution, something that even the Archbishop of Dublin called a social revolution. In southeastern China, the death toll is now at 52 after the latest round of flooding. And the, at least six others are missing, six other people are missing in the floods that have ravaged provinces there. More than a quarter million people have moved to temporary shelters. Continuous downpours have led to landslides and traffic disruptions in mountain areas. There is just a scorching heat wave sweeping across India. It is blamed in the deaths of more than 600 people, and that's in four days. The capital of New Delhi plus two states are the worst hit. Over the weekend, temperatures in New Delhi soared to nearly 110 degrees. That searing heat could continue for over the next few days as well. And that's a quick check of some of the stories making headlines around the world today. A two-year-old boy was killed in an accident over the weekend near Wilmington, North Carolina. His pregnant mother was injured and had to undergo an emergency C-section. Police say the driver of a truck failed to slow down and slammed into the family's vehicle on Saturday. The woman's husband, who is a church leader, was also injured. Now their newborn is in the hospital fighting for his life. Steve Crump has that heartbreaking story. Hearts and wallets continue to open as a means of offering the Charlotte family financial support during a time of crisis. The numbers from the GoFundMe website, which is helping the Eddings family, share a story of generosity soaring from $3,500 just after four on Sunday to a solid total of five figures. They were at a stoplight and an 18-wheeler uh, rear-ended them. With deep emotion, Forest Hill Pastor David Chadwick shared the details from the spot Gentry Eddings normally occupies on most Sundays at the congregation's Ballantyne campus. Uh, sadly, um, Dobbs, the two-year-old little boy, was killed. And um, by the time they were able to get him out of the smashed-up car, he had already gone to be with Jesus. Chadwick says the boy's parents, Gentry and Hadley, were both injured and rushed to the hospital. She was eight months pregnant, and moments after leaving the scene, her new son, Reed, was born via cesarean section. I understand this morning that he, little Reed, took the finger of Gentry's father, which is a great sign. They've given him a blood transfusion. Um, they've taken him off the respirator for just a little bit, and he's actually breathed on his own. Um, his lungs are working fairly well. His heart seems to be working fairly well. Hmm. Now the North Carolina State Highway Patrol is investigating the crash. It is still a little too early to start talking about Christmas, unless you're as cool as Bill Murray. He is making very special plans for a very Murray Christmas, and we're all invited to the party. And talked out why one of the stars of CBS's The Talk is going silent for the next month. 
if you're watching CBS 46 News at 4. Outside, you need a comfort system. Some big names making news this afternoon. Sharon Osborne Osborne says she is taking some time off from the talk. Osborne says doctors doctors told her she was suffering from extreme exhaustion. A statement released to People magazine says Osborne collapsed from mental and physical fatigue last week after trips to New York and Toronto. Osborne will be gone from the talk show for about a month. Actress Kelly Rutherford has been temporarily awarded sole custody of her two kids by a judge in Los Angeles. The children have been living with their father in Europe since 2012 after his U.S. visa was revoked. Another hearing, though, in this case is scheduled next month. Comedian Bill Murray has a new Christmas special headed to Netflix. A Very Murray Christmas is described as an hour-long variety show special. Okay. George Clooney, Amy Poehler, Chris Rock, Miley Cyrus. Miley well, Cyrus, an interesting huh. mix there. Okay. And several other stars are featured on the show. A very Murray Christmas will air in December. The, I guess the whole variety show thing must be coming back. Plus, huh? they get total creative freedom yeah. when they go to Netflix and <laughs> Amazon or some of the other of you know, newer outlets, mm -hmm. shall, we, shall we say. He is a man of his word, but will he get to keep it? The promise this high school teacher made to his students, if only a certain pop superstar will pick up the phone <laughs> and give him a phone call. Well, no problems in terms of rain or lightning or thunder at Lake Lanier just yet. But, oh, the times are changing. And that, over the next couple of hours, my full forecast coming up right after the break. Others Calling Taylor Swift. Yes, yeah, students in one class in Montana at a high school there, they need her help to get out of their final exam. Hmm. The students and their teachers say all she has to do is make just one phone call. Dustin Kleinman tells us all about it. Take a step into Coulter Pierce's classroom and you'll learn world history. Uh, in other words, they're trying to overthrow the current government. Take a look online and it's a picture with a handshake. Promise that his students will not have to take a final exam. Okay. Don't look like an idiot. If a certain woman picks up the phone and makes a call. Pretty much all semester I've been talking about Taylor Swift. <laughs> the idea came from sophomore Ike Stoner and a deal was struck. It was just kind of a joke, really. I just kind of wanted to see if I could get more followers on Twitter. <laughs> As Stoner put it on Twitter, fellow student Ashton Goodell helped the cause. Can I start? Can I go? Sharing the agreement on Facebook. It got out of hand fast. It escalated quickly. And maybe the punchline of what started out as a joke is people aren't kidding about their support. 22,000, 40,000, 45,000, 49. And then when I went to bed last night, 55,000. Got here this morning, 83,000. And last check was 107,000. And according to our math, it's about 100 a minute. <laughs> Even if the call does happen, Pierce will administer some sort of exam to test students' knowledge. But he will honor the contract, which school officials agreed to. But history is happening even in this class. And the students, they're experiencing it, using social media tools in our day and age to make the world a smaller place. I think if Taylor Swift calls, everyone's going to try to go get a celebrity's attention. Everyone wants to meet a celebrity like Taylor Swift. That would be pretty crazy. It's not so much trying to get these kids out of their final as it is seeing that celebrities are still normal, down-to-earth people. And I think that's probably the biggest driving force behind it. So, T. Swift, are you listening? Come on, Taylor. Please call for us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, mm. good luck with that. At least it's a lesson in the power of yes. social media, okay. right? No call yet from Taylor Swift, but finals, they aren't for another two weeks, so they do have a little bit of time. If left. I'm still their parents, I tell them to study, <laughs> exactly. just in case she doesn't call. Yes. All right, right now, let's give you a live look at CBS 46 Radar. As uh, some rain is moving in closer to the metro area, which may bring a change to the remainder of your Memorial Day holiday. So let's go now and check in with our chief meteorologist, Jim Kosick. Always be prepared. It was probably the Boy Scouts motto. And, you know, if you're dealing with the thunder and lightning now, we don't have that over the vast majority of the state. We do so once you get up along the Chattooga County line and points northbound. But this is lifting more north northeast as opposed to due east, although we still have a uh, uh, you know, an advisory for some heavy pockets of rain and lightning over the northwest part of Chattooga County. I want to start you off and, uh, you know, kind of go south to north across the uh, area on our CBS 46 Doppler radar. Once again, lightning tracker is on, but these are just pockets of rain, some heavy 
Nothing in terms of thunder and lightning here. Uh, there you go, Heard, Troop, Meriwether County, Upson, up through uh, Lamar right now, uh, right up along parts of 19 and through uh, Spalding County as well. The coverage area expands across Clayton County, just outside the perimeter, also right along the Douglas-Fulton County line, lifting almost due north. So even though there's a little bit of rain, uh, once you get the west of Midtown, it looks like it's going to bypass the stage west and head more up the road toward Marietta, eastern flank of Cobb County. We'll hone in on uh, some of the rain. And again, just rain, but some hard downpours. Riverdale up through uh, Forest Park at this hour. Also, once you get outside the perimeter, away from Sandy Springs and Dunwoody. But I did mention Marietta would be getting rain. That's going to be tapering off momentarily. Right up along parts of 575, coming down to beat the band, but no thunder, no lightning. Also, once you get, uh, oh, what are we talking about? Uh, the west central flank of uh, for Scythe County, and here's some of those big storms. But if we put a, a tracker on this, headed off to the north northeast at 18, 19 miles per hour. It's in the Tate area now, headed to Grandview at 507, Jasper at 512. All right, so now you're in the know. The coverage area to the rain and some thunder and lightning will be increasing through about 9 to 11 this evening. OK, because there's still a good bit of rain out across Alabama. The vast majority, if not all of the storms will not be severe. That's the good news. But this whole cluster will diminish overnight. And then another one spins off the parent storm system, which is over the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex area. And as it does so, there's actually a slight risk of severe weather. This is tomorrow, mind you, slight risk of severe weather northwest of Metro Atlanta, so we're certainly going to keep you posted. So unlike this evening, where there's little to no risk of severe weather, tomorrow a little bit of a different ball game. Here's a starting point. Temperatures in the 60s. It is a warm, humid run all week, right on in through the weekend. So that means more times than not, we're 80s by day and 60s throughout the course of the nighttime hours. But there's a change in the offing here. All those showers and thunderstorms will be any time over the next 48 hours. The vast majority of them occur during the midday, afternoon, evening, at least for Tuesday and Wednesday. And there is that isolated severe thunderstorm risk, damaging winds and small hail. By Thursday afternoon, the threat is relegated to the afternoon. By Friday and this upcoming weekend, the storms are more missed than hit during the afternoon. So outdoor plans, you should keep them for the time being. Just stay abreast of the weather. By Monday, another storm system rolls in uptick in terms of coverage area and rain. And yes, indeed, your garden will be getting a healthy drink over the next couple of days as the uh, thunderstorm pattern, more like summer, continues. Scott. All right, Jim, thanks. There is a bigger demand for food that is considered healthier with fewer artificial ingredients. Small companies so far have really capitalized on this concept, but now major corporations are following suit. Here's more from Jill Wagner. It's a lot of kettle. At this popcorn factory in Harlem, brother and sister Jeff and Jen Martin and their small team pop and package Pipcorn, a new snack that's all natural, gluten free, and vegan. And they say that has been a huge selling point. And so many people are conscious of what they're putting in their body. It's not just specialty food startups that are going natural. Many of the nation's biggest food companies are also changing their recipes. Kraft recently announced it's removing artificial orange and yellow dye in its beloved mac and cheese. Tyson is getting rid of antibiotics in chicken. Chipotle removed all genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, from its food. Panera Bread is cutting artificial ingredients. And McDonald's said it's simplifying its chicken recipe, slicing any ingredients you can't pronounce. Going back to simple ingredients, all natural. Marketing professor Michelle Greenwald says Americans are more aware of their health, looking for natural foods without artificial ingredients, and they're willing to pay a bit more for it. It's a quality of life issue that's kind of an affordable indulgence. So now we'll add it's just a really nice, high quality sea salt. Martin says their customers want that quality. After just three years, they're already expanding to keep up with demand. For an all natural business, that's popping. In New York, Jill Wagner, CBS News. Well, Memorial Day isn't just another day off. It is a day to remember friends and loved ones who died serving our country. Hear the heartfelt message one little boy had for the father he lost when he was just a baby. Next. And we'll show you a 60-year tradition at Arlington National Cemetery as the nation pauses to honor those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. You're watching CBS 46 News at 4.
Now, a touching story about a little boy honoring his father this Memorial Day. But it's okay, because Daddy, where's Daddy? He's in a heart? Yeah. This little boy, dressed in a Marine uniform, was among hundreds of families remembering the fallen at Arlington National Cemetery today. Well, sitting with his mom, he read his heartfelt message for his Marine dad, who died when he was just a baby. And I love you and hope for you to be here. And I know you will be here. And I love you. Mm. That little boy continued his moving tribute by saying, Daddy, I know you will always watch over me. And I know you are proud mm. of me. Let's go to Maine now. A third grader is getting some national attention for his answer to a request. It came from his local newspaper. Isaac Campbell and other students at his elementary school were asked what they wanted to add to their homes. While other kids asked for big screen TVs, one even asked for a hot tub, Isaac wanted something else. I said the United States flag. I'm having a hard time keeping it together right now because I mean, this is very important to me and in my heart. At eight years old, he wants a flag I'm doing what I can do to get that kid a flag. And it happened. A petty officer in the U.S. Navy saw Isaac's story and was so touched, he and his wife sent Isaac a flag and some additional gifts, too. Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton spent her Memorial Day close to home. She and her husband, former President Bill Clinton, they marched in the Memorial Day parade in Newcastle, New York. Now, this is the first time they've been together in public since Hillary Clinton announced last month that she was running for president. This parade is about honoring uh, those we've lost, and later in the ceremony we'll be reading the names of everybody from uh, this area who has been lost in wars. Uh, so obviously uh, that's what I want to keep focused on, and make sure that we pay proper respect to our veterans, and particularly those who lost their lives. The parade was near the Clintons' home. Hillary Clinton has marched in the parade several times since moving to that area. We continue to honor those who have given greatly to our country on this day. Last week, the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment placed more than 228,000 flags. They did that at grave sites at Arlington National Cemetery to honor our fallen heroes. This tradition is called Flags In, and it's happened each year right before Memorial Day since 1948. Stay with us. The news at five starts right now. Our Memorial Day coverage continues. People across Metro Atlanta remember those who died while serving our country. Plus, danger on the water. What's being done to make sure fun in the sun doesn't turn tragic on Lake Lanier? CBS 46 News at five starts now. Hello, and thanks for being with us. I'm Tracy Hutchinson for Stephanie Fisher. And I'm Scott Light. So right now, we are keeping a close eye on the weather out there. Some storms starting to move into the area. A few clouds there over Lake Lanier still. Lake was a great place to be mm -hmm. over the weekend. But let's see what is in store as we head into the evening hours. We'll check in with our chief meteorologist, Jim Kosick. Well, it's going to be an uptick in terms of the coverage area to wet weather. Just a couple of lighter rain showers uh, west of Lake Lanier. They are traveling due northbound. Temperatures down into the 70s in this area with that blanket of cloud cover that you mentioned, Scott. But there is lightning both sides of I-20 on the Alabama-Georgia border. These storms also drifting off to the north-northeast at about 18, 19 miles per hour. So Harrelson County uh, western flank of Carroll County under the gun, as well as uh, Chattooga County and points northbound. Some of the lightning and pockets of heavy rain will be coming in through a
Polk, Floyd County over the next hour and expect some of the uh, other pockets of rain coming in, into uh, uh, areas of uh, northern Clayton County, uh, DeKalb County and points northbound to gradually expand in terms of coverage area. So heavy pockets of rain, lightning, that's the biggest threat that we face as opposed to severe weather throughout the first part of the nighttime hours. Kind of a good news, bad news scenario there. We don't have to worry about damaging wind gusts, but on the other hand, it's no picnic if you're conned underneath some of these heavier downpours. There's the steering flow that I'm talking about, but there's a lot more rain over parts of Alabama that will increase the coverage area to the wet weather through about 9, 10, 11 o'clock this evening. Overnight, it's on the wane, but there's more problems as we head on in through tomorrow as there is a risk of severe weather northwest of Metro Atlanta. I'll have more information on that coming up in a few short minutes from now, guys. Jim, thank you. Don't forget, folks, you can keep track of the weather between our newscasts 24-7 with that. Our CBS 46 weather app, of course, is free for Apple and Android users. On this Memorial Day, people are pausing to remember fallen members of the military. Our nation's commander-in-chief is among those honoring the men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice. President Obama later wreathed at the tomb of the unknown soldier at Arlington National Cemetery. People across Metro Atlanta, too, are also remembering our fallen military men and women. From somber ceremonies to hometown celebrations, the lives lost, the lives lost are not far from people's minds today. CBS 46's Melinda Roder has more from Memorial Park in Athens. A fresh wreath here at Memorial Park in Athens in honor of all those who served and were injured or paid the ultimate sacrifice for freedom. What are they? Stars. The flag and memorial near the park entrance serve as a reminder of what today is really about. But yards away, a celebration is underway where families gather to picnic and play games. America is a great place for all people to live. Parents proudly display their true sense of patriotism. You know, just sort of remembering the troops and, you know, those who have, have served for us and just thinking about them and, you know, that's the most important thing to do. But it's clear that even the kids in the crowd have gotten a lesson about life and freedom. What does Memorial Day mean to you? It means that we have to celebrate America. To remember the soldiers who've, who have died. It reminds you of all the people that died for you. No matter what their plans today, families said they came out early because they wanted to fit in the fun before it rained this afternoon. In Athens, Melinda Roeder, CBS 46 News. And families who lost loved ones fighting for our country's freedom, they gathered at Marietta National Cemetery. A solemn ceremony was held to remember those lives lost. We talked to veterans about this day out there. And I see folks that are missing arms and legs and whatever. Mine was so, so small in nature that it's even hard to even consider to be in, in the same group with those folks. The Marietta Memorial Day ceremony is one of the largest in Metro Atlanta and also the longest consecutively running service in the region. A 24-hour Memorial Day vigil is underway right now at the Memorial Park Funeral Home and Cemetery in Gainesville. Honor guards from several agencies started at midnight standing post and marching in the Veterans Gardens. Their ends, uh, it will end tonight at midnight. For a look at other Memorial Day services and events happening across the metro Atlanta area today, head to our website, cbs46.com. Our Memorial Day coverage continues at 530. We'll take a look at how people around the country are remembering service members. Now to new details in the deadly shooting of an East Point security guard. Police continue their search for whomever shot and killed this guard while he patrolled the Tri-Cities Plaza. That's along Main Street. The shooting happened early Sunday morning. CBS 46's Tyler Beckham joins us now live from that scene with a reaction from some folks who live in that area. Tyler. Scott, investigators say Antonio Spear was patrolling Tri-Cities Plaza, as you said. He was in his vehicle when he was shot and accelerated shortly after that, plowing into that group of trees, narrowly missing that MARTA stop. It's senseless doesn't make sense. Had it happened any other day at any other time. It was so loud, so I didn't really pay no attention to it. But when I got out and really seen what was happening, I was like, oh, my God. Andrika Farmer could have been right in the line of fire. She takes Marta daily from this stop. It was pretty quiet and for it to happen when it did and why it's just senseless to me. 
A stop that just happens to be feet away from the path deadly shooting victim Antonio Spears' SUV tore through as he accelerated just seconds after being shot. East Point police say it may have been Spears' final move after gunmen killed him while he patrolled a shopping center across the street. It's likely he was shot there in his SUV, then he hit the gas, nearly tearing into what's left of a portion of a chain link fence and a cluster of trees. Firefighters had to saw through those trees just to get Spears' SUV loose so East Point police could investigate the vehicle. Police even used drones to scout the area for what few clues may have been left behind. In this area, Andrika Farmer has known for years, but never like this. And I've been coming here. I grew up in the neighborhood, so being here um, and hearing this so close to home is very senseless. You can see there are a number of surveillance cameras here at Tri-Cities Plaza, but this one is attached to a company that's out of business. Ditto for most of the businesses here at Tri-Cities Plaza, one by one by one, empty doors, which means investigators' job looking for the gunman here is just that much more difficult. For now, we're live in East Point in Fulton County. Tyler Beckham, CBS 46 News. Let's cover some of the counties today at 5 o'clock. Clayton County investigators are looking into a deadly accident, this one involving a fire truck. It happened on I-675 South near Highway 138. Clayton County Fire tells us they were trying to help two cars that were in an accident when out of nowhere a vehicle ran into the back of their flatbed truck. The driver died there at the scene. The other person in that vehicle is still in the hospital. Another wreck claimed the life claimed a life in Fulton County. It happened early this morning along Wendell Drive and Wendell Court. When police arrived, the car was on fire. The driver was trapped. Rescuers got the driver out, but that person later died at the hospital. Police haven't released the victim's name yet or said what caused that accident. Investigators in Gwinnett County are trying to figure out what caused a house to catch on fire twice in less than 24 hours. It happened in Tequila. This is cell phone video of the second fire that started last night. Firefighters had had just been to the same home for another fire Saturday night. No one was hurt in either fire. And you know what? It isn't clear yet what started this big fire in Peachtree Corners. Friday night's fire heavily damaged a strip mall. You can see the flames right there. One business there was open at the time, but everyone was able to get out safely. Witnesses say that fire started in the roof of the shopping center. Well, tis the season for graduations, but not many of the ceremonies are as emotional as the one we found in Alabama. Pomp, circumstance, and tears of joy. You know, there's paying at the pump, so why is getting paid at the pump such a bad idea? This is video you've got to see next. A developing story now in 13 southern states. There's a movement to bury the Confederate flag. Now, one of the ceremonies was right here in Metro Atlanta. As CBS 46's Dante Carter tells us, the past that some are trying to cover up is disrespectful to others. That group talked about burying what they call a symbol of terror, but I can tell you sons of Confederate soldiers say their flag is no different than the one that we all stand behind. No shovels, just words. Dearly beloved, raising thought by raising their voices. We are gathered here today in honor on this on this Memorial Day evening. Tyrone Allen says they're burying the pain associated with this flag. The Confederate battle flag has 150 years of post-mortem activity. By talking about it. A lot of lives have been lost um, around this Confederate flag. If you don't see the, the hate that comes along with it, and there has come along with it, if you don't see the racism that was behind what has been founded with this, with the usage of it, um, then you're ignoring that. I spoke with Scott Gilbert, a former post commander with the Sons of Confederate Veterans. If you go online and you just Google search, you will see more pictures with the U.S. flag and the Christian flag than the Confederate flag, and I think that's an excuse. He says this flag represents more than just the pain and hatred. With all due respect to the other soldiers of the other wars, and those men were, whether you like it or not, defending their homes. The Confederate States never invaded anybody. You have to acknowledge what has been a result of that heritage at the same time. You can't, you can't ignore, you can't recognize the good of something and ignore the bad of something at the same time. For now, in DeKalb County, Dante Carter, CBS 46 News. Here are some of the stories making news around the nation today at 5. Fighter jets escorted an Air France plane to JFK Airport in New York after an anonymous threat. 
Police in Maryland received a call about a chemical weapons threat on board that flight. The Airbus A330 landed in a secure area of the airport so it could be searched. The FBI says that plane has been cleared. Now, there have been several threats regarding flights today. None of them have proven to be legitimate so far. An elderly California couple who disappeared on Mother's Day has been found. Police say the husband was dead and the wife was severely dehydrated. She's in serious condition. Investigators believe the couple tried to take a shortcut. This was after a trip to a San Diego casino. They got lost and then they got stuck on a rugged road. They were discovered by someone who was off-roading in that area. Let's go to New Orleans. The search is on for the person who shot and killed a housing authority officer. He was working overtime to guard a construction site where some new public housing was being built. After he was shot, his car rolled at least a block down the streets, and then it finally stopped. A massive tanker fire brought traffic to a standstill along I-75 in downtown Detroit. About 9,000 gallons of unleaded fuel went up in flames. Some of the fuel also seeped into the sewers. The interstate was shut down for hours. No one was hurt. Michigan State Police say there was a mechanical issue with the truck, and that may have started the fire. More severe weather now is expected after storms dumped record rain on parts of Texas and Oklahoma. The storms killed at least three people. Twelve others are missing, and thousands were forced from their homes. Omar, Omar Villafranca has more from Wimberley, Texas. That is one of the hardest hit areas. The Blanco River in San Marcos, Texas, rose 26 feet in just one hour. The river overflowed, flooding roads and wiping away homes. We do have uh, 12 missing persons that we are actively searching for. First responders used a helicopter to lift a 68-year-old father trapped in the river for two hours. Like, just hold on. Please don't leave. Please don't leave. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. And he was just like, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. There was another dramatic rescue near Austin. A kayaker struggled to keep his head above the rushing waters of the San Gabriel River until bystanders pulled him to safety. Nearby Wimberley was also hit hard. Hundreds of homes were destroyed. The river swelled dozens of feet and 100-year-old trees were uprooted. This home was ripped off its foundation and pushed into the hillside. Is this area going to come back? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it will. It will. Massive flooding also hit Oklahoma. Two people were killed, including a firefighter who was trying to evacuate stranded residents. He's our hero. <laughs> That's for sure. The storms also spawned a tornado that damaged a Houston apartment complex. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Wimberley, Texas. Certified Atlanta's most accurate forecast. Now, CBS 46 Chief Meteorologist Jim Kosek. Well, we're starting to see uh, some lightning associated with three three different clusters of storms. Actually make that four uh, that are now into the state of Georgia. Our CBS 46 Doppler radar honing in on uh, some of those storms. There's a uh, number one just off to the east of 19. Uh, so do keep that in mind. This is Lamar County right on the border with uh, Pike County. As it drifts off to the north northeast, it'll eventually get into the eastern part of Spalding County, most likely just off to the east of Griffin. Not that Griffin can't uh, pick up rain and uh, light because we have additional stuff uh, west of 19 on the Upson side. And then you have more action uh, getting on in through uh, northeastern parts of uh, Troop County, uh, northwestern uh, Meriwether, up and through uh, Coweta County, farther to the north southwest of Dallas, that part of Paulding County, uh, tapering uh, showers. And, you, know, you, you get so far east on it through a uh, Green County, uh, probably nothing until, uh, you know, at least a good three, four, five hours from now, there's more action once you get to closer to the metro. And this is going to be a Clayton County and points northbound getting in through a DeKalb County. This is just rain, mind you. Nothing in terms of lightning just yet, but inside the perimeter, it already is and continues to march off to the north. Once you uh, get outside the perimeter uh, over parts of uh, Cobb County, uh, just off to the north of Austell, running in through Marietta right now, and then just off to the south of Tate is the heavy rain, but uh, not to take anything away from Tate, it's certainly coming down that part of Pickens County on in through uh, Dawson County right now. Back to the west, I want to show you some of these other storms and put a tracker on this one because these are some of the uh, uh, lightning strikes and uh, quite uh, formidable over the northwestern flank of Carroll County as well as Harold. County moving off to the north northeast uh, Temple momentarily uh, over the road towards Cedar Town. This is on the uh, Polk County side at 544, and then Lake Creek and Yorkville eventually getting in on the act. There's more lightning once you get uh, just off to the west of 
Rome with some of the storms coming up through Floyd County, Chattooga, and points northbound. A little bit more of a northeasterly movement as opposed to due north with the storms coming away from Alabama. And you could see that as we put this in motion here. Some of the big pockets of rain will be able to uh, inundate some of us as we go uh, deeper in through the evening, another two to four hours from now. Everything should be on the wane uh, after 10, 11 o'clock this evening as we see a bit of a, a break farther off to the south. But, you know, the parent storm system is still back here over the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So that's going to spin up another round of storms into our neck of the woods tomorrow. And it could be isolated severe weather. Rain totals over the next 48 hours. The purple shade area is over an inch. The blue shade area at least a half inch to an inch. So while we're not discussing flash flooding for the time being, yeah, for some of us, that could eventually become a problem later in the work week as there will be more storms. So once again, rain and thunderstorms will diminish later tonight. They'll pick back up again during the midday and the afternoon hours tomorrow. The outdoor lunch date index only at 3, 82 degrees before the onset of storms. A couple of spots could have a shower during the morning hours, but again, most of it from the lunch hour onward. That is the risk of severe weather, especially northwest of Metro Atlanta. More rain and thunderstorms during the course of Wednesday. Then we start to taper things down. The reason being a large pocket of high pressure comes over the deep south. It traps the moisture underneath it. What fires the storms is the heating of the day, so they're limited to the afternoon hours. And notice how the uh, probability of precipitation diminishes. So by Friday and this upcoming weekend, the storms are more missed than hit. So that means most of us could get in some outdoor plans. But boy, oh boy, it's going to be a warm, humid time frame, almost like summer already. Now, I guess kind of it's uh, unofficial, right, Tracy? Pretty much everybody is, you know, out for the mm -hmm. school year and so many people are out on Lake Lanier enjoying the holiday. All right, Jim, thank you. We will check back in with you in a bit. Here's some video you have to see this afternoon. A brazen crook whips out a drill and starts to bore a hole in an ATM outside of a California gas station. Didn't he know this doesn't usually work out for them? Well, the pay at the machine pump uh, holds ga cash as well. Police say the crook attached a chain to the machine, yanked it oh, off of it with his goodness. vehicle. Yeah, it didn't work. Not a surprise there, but investigators say this guy, this is in this first guy's attempt. On one of my sites, they uh, took about $4,000. The other one was three to $3,500. And uh, today, uh, luckily, I got saved. Mm, police are looking for the man and the two people who are working with them. They often strike early in the morning when there aren't many customers around. All right, so be careful what you post on Instagram. Someone else may be profiting from it. An art exhibit in New York features pictures, well, from Instagram. The artist made some minor changes and then reprinted them, selling some for upwards of $100,000. Instagram users say that the artist never got their permission to use the images, but even if they go after that person, lawyers say they probably won't see any money. Instagram photos are exchanged for free. So what value, in fact, do they have? For the average user, the answer might be none. The only way to really prevent Someone from reusing your Instagram or social media images or your pictures out there is to make sure that your account or your accounts are private. Wow. Graduation season right now in full swing. Students and their families, they're celebrating. One Alabama high school graduate has even more reason to celebrate thanks to his graduation day surprise. When uh, Stephen Turner Jr.'s name was called, there was more than his diploma waiting on him for stage. <laughs> <laughs> well, lots of hugging and crying there. His mom, Petty Officer Second Class Vera Turner, while well, she was there, she has been deployed in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba for the last nine months. Now, she told her family she wouldn't be able to go to her son's graduation, so she planned the surprise with the school district. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you, Julia. It means, like, so much to me. It means, like, the whole world. Like, I thought she wasn't, thought she wasn't going to make it. Hmm. Well, he says she turned out to be the best graduation gift he could have ever gotten. All right, so if you have a hard time relaxing, let's say even on a holiday weekend, you're still not alone. Why it may be okay to worry about your worry. That's coming up in CBS 46 Health. And we know dogs are faithful companions. Now there's evidence they provide kids with something else that they desperately need. You're watching CBS 46 News at 5. Last year, the number is even higher for unemployed adults. People with anxiety disorders battle overwhelming worry and fear. 
Here's some new evidence that pets may lower social anxiety in kids with autism. Researchers from Purdue University found that when kids with autism were exposed to companion animals, their stress levels dropped. Researchers say that children may feel more secure since the animals are so accepting to them. More and more veterans are using yoga to cope with their mental and physical health. As Chelsea Edwards tells us, some VA centers are even holding yoga classes for veterans. Marine Corps veteran Martha Huff found peace of mind through yoga at the VA Medical Center in Long Beach, California. I have learned how to breathe and how to control the PTSD. It helps with the way I can control things. As you exhale. Experts say yoga can help veterans reduce stress. A recent study shows the mindful practices of yoga can help with traumatic memories. They have a mental clarity, uh, decreased depression, anxiety, and their ability to focus. Health experts say that yoga can also help veterans who suffer with chronic pain, both through the movements as well as through deep breathing and meditation. The technique helped Vietnam vet and cancer survivor Steve Stokowski manage his pain from chemotherapy. We're made aware of what our bodies are doing at particular times, uh, and we can control that pain. And then, of course, the, the upward spiral, spiral starts. You know, there's pain, you relax, there's less pain, you relax more, there's less pain. VA nurse practitioner Peggy Black says an increasing number of veterans are turning to yoga as an alternative to prescription meds. Many of the veterans are really tired of trying to treat their pain with pain medications. I was taking pills every six hours. I'm down now to pills twice a day. These veterans credit yoga with giving them coping skills that have changed their lives. Chelsea Edwards for CBS News, Long Beach, California. Health experts say yoga can also improve sleep and heart health and lower cholesterol and blood pressure too. Well, the holiday weekend celebrations, they may be coming to an end, but when you're out of the lake, there is one lesson. Police want to make sure that you take with you all summer long. Also this evening, nosy neighbors. When you hear about what allegedly happened in this house, you might wish they lived near you. You're watching CBS 46 News. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter.